those laity results. Gail Burgess, 165. Katie Estrom Fuller, 90. Tom Pop, 40. Judy Vaspi, 27. And John Lawson, 12. One of the biggest mistakes that was made that made ballots invalid for the laity was you voted for too many people or you voted for someone who was already elected. For Barbara or Lisa, they're already elected. Choose someone else. Okay, now the clergy results. Number of ballots cast was 214. Number of valid ballots was 201. Oops. <laughs> Number needed for election was 101. Here's the results. Steve Zekoff, 70. Amanda Stein, 65. And Jorge Mayorga Solis, 36. Okay. The reason invalid? The reason that they had... 10 people that had invalid ballots was because they voted for too many people. So that means I think people is not one. listening carefully <laughs> from the podium. One. This little light one. So I think uh, listen carefully to the, your secretary and also listen to your bishop. <laughs> If you do that, we will finish very early. Oh. <laughs> All right. I think that's my gentle reminder. And let us hear the, the instruction about what we're going to do now. You need to mark this ballot G6. It's General Conference, the last ballot we will be taken to choose our delegation for the General Conference. Now, please note, you are to mark one for one. Do not vote for Barbara. Do not vote for Lisa. They are in already. The other thing you need to know is that we now will take the person who receives the most votes on this ballot will be the de last delegate for the clergy and the last delegate for the laity. So it's just the most votes this time. All right. And again, I'm going to repeat you that to you. You are beautiful people, so that means you are uh, give a space to others, and even quiet way be waiting. I think that's always the good lesson to each other, right? So, are you ready to vote? Okay, let me have a, invite you to silent moment at this moment. Come Holy Spirit, come, come Holy Spirit, come. Give us wisdom so that we can elect your faithful servants who can serve on behalf of all of us. This beautiful, diverse community that we are here and asking your guidance. Amen. All right, now ready? Vote now. All right, I'm going to invite laity to stand up and then give a quiet space each other. Tell her team two to go get the ballot from the people.
right? Still, few people is not collected it. All right, the ballot is closed. It. Thank you. This is a great. I'm going to invite clergy to stand and the laity give a space for, for the quietness. Teller team one. While we are collecting, that I'm going to invite the board of a global ministry covenant, the, the John Lawson and Paul Armstrong will be in the podium, so we can quick act next item. We're still collecting. Voting is still going on. All right, the, all the ballot is collected. Okay, voting is closed. Thank you for this uh, collaboration together as a beautiful people. Mm. Okay, John, welcome back. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, annual conference. Here we are again for health and welfare, and I want to take a moment or two to recognize a couple of other folk. I'd like to recognize uh, Steve Polster, who is a board member of the United Methodist Association of Health and Welfare Ministries, uh, association for all the United Methodist Ministries that do this kind of work. Um, and that's important and good work as we seek to uh, carry out Christ's commission to care for the sick to invite in the stranger, uh, to feed those who are hungry and give drink to those who are thirsty. We are preparing to look at action item 33, so you can be getting that out. And while that is happening, we have a DVD presentation again for Northcott Neighborhood House, Mac Weddle, director. And if we can cue the video. <laughs> I hope it's coming. While we're waiting on, well, no, here it is. Do we have sound? Of the United Methodist Church. Every 60 seconds, no. malaria claims a life in one. Africa. No? This is so-called technical difficulty. <laughs> well, now while we're sorting that out, uh, let me draw your attention to this brochure, which you will find at the communications booth, and also the health and welfare ministries booth, which is at the far end of uh, what someone described to me as the divot. <laughs> in the lobby area.
Northcott uh, Neighborhood House is a mission agency of United Methodist Church that was started in 1961 by the East Wisconsin Conference United Methodist Women. Northcott gives over 10,000 people a year wholeheartedly positive services that really influence and change their lives. Where the majority of the young people we serve come from single parent families, where usually the mother is the dominant person in the family. And so our programs are geared towards catering to the needs of those people that are part of our programs. My great grandson, this is a safe haven for him and the children in the neighborhood. They come, there's people here to help them with their homework, teach them how to use the computer, teach them good skills in basketball, football, and how to get along with each other. We have recreation activities, girls and boys basketball, volleyball, we have an eight to 10 year old girls and boys soccer team, we have a boys 12 to 14 year old tackle football team, uh, we have a boys uh, sixth grade basketball team that's involved in AAU that travel all over the state, uh, we have a games room, we have pool, ping pong, foosball. What keeps me coming back is just to not forget like where I've come from, you know, just to see other kids that come here to hang out, to, you know, just to always come back to where I grew up at. Once a month we get a stock box. That's from the Hungry Cats for us. And there's good nourishment food in there for all of us, for you, just so that we won't be hungry. We have a housing program working with 16 to 24 year olds, we're building houses, but it's really based on the bond theory. That's how important we build these houses, but we change these young people's behavior. But in the process of changing their behavior, we're teaching them a skill. It means like being at home, a home away from home. We want to really thank all the United Methodist Churches for supporting us, because without your support, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we're doing. We have before us now action item 33, which is in the additional material that you received in your packet at registration, covenant of affiliation between Northcott Neighborhood House, Inc. and the Wisconsin Conference of the United Methodist Church. Bishop, that is now before us. All right, action item number 33 is in front of you. Floor is open, any discussion? All right, are you ready to vote? Okay, those who, those in favor for this motion in 33, it affiliated relationship that between this North Cod Neighborhood House and then our Wisconsin Conference. Okay, those in favor, would you raise your hand? Lower hand, and those opposed? None, motion is carried. It. Thank you, Bishop. Thank, Thank you, you. Your conference. Thank you so much for the leadership that you do. Thank you. Thank you. The cabinet address will be in order, and we will expect the cabinet address. But I think before coming there, I need to speak to you about Norscott. We all heard about it, we saw that, and how much that we are relating it with the Northcott Neighborhood Center. In many ways, that this is a legacy of Wisconsin. The Bishop Northcott, been, the Bishop in Wisconsin, has been a legacy builder in many different ways. Uh, we are inherited it, that beautiful tradition. So I hope that we can continually strengthen our relationship and support and their life and their journey together. So, as a, as a bishop, I am so proud to carrying that relationship together. Thank you, thank you, man. All right, our Dean of the Cabinet, Gordon Lin. I invite you to look at the banners behind me. In the vertical banner, seed, being sown. 
but sowing is not enough. Seed must be dropped, as we know from the Bible and from our themes in this annual conference, must be dropped into prepared soil and then tended. To get from this vertical banner to the horizontal one with the young plants, we need to tend the seed. Cabinet celebrates sowing seed, but sowing is not enough. Cabinet knows, as you know, that the sowing that we, the men and women behind me, together with Bishop Jung, have done together, the sowing we have done together in ministry, in relationships, in supervision, is a good effort, but it's not enough. We want the seed not to die, but to grow. We want our imagined future to be stronger better than it is today. And I know you do also. Amen. We as conference need to tend that seed. We have much to tend, thank God. We celebrate 40 seeds mapped out and imagine Wisconsin anew put into your packet on that map. 40. Using God's abundance, recruitment, all people's gifts, we imagine a God-sized dream. Forty new potential ministries dreamed by district strategy teams, some already launched. We celebrate not a single seed, but 40. That will require some tending. Last annual conference session, we decided to assess circuits, you remember? Now we are ready to relaunch. Hallelujah. Amen. We celebrate in circuit 2.0 the enhanced role of laity, the church, the laos. We celebrate a focus not on administration, but on ministry. We celebrate the collaboration and clergy. And most of all, for that tending, we celebrate systematic training and coaching, long needed, delivered now. Circuits will tend the seed, and in this way, sisters and brothers, we are on the way. Cabinet and conference celebrate the proposal of another fifth district superintendent. Five districts instead of eight. One district for each superintendent. Each district smaller in number of people and smaller in geographic size than our current regions, each with two districts, as you know. I stand before you with my retirement pin in my pocket, <laughs> having superintended now for seven years. I know the joy of it and the challenge of it. The restructuring proposal is a step in the right direction, I believe, an investment in our future together. The redistricting FAQ sheet in your packet lists the benefits. A more manageable number of congregations and clergy for each superintendent. More opportunity for relationship building between congregation, clergy, and cabinet. A positive impact on leadership development, appointment making, and starts to new appointments. Five is better than four. Some more is better than no more. People have asked, and let me give you the top three roles of superintendents today. Number one, mission strategist, especially with the district strategy teams. Number two, supervisor, including the one-on-one -on -one meetings with clergy, the supervisory and supportive meetings that have been restored in this past year. And three, 
guide for fruitful appointments and transitions of congregation and clergy. Cabinet knows what many of you know our system can do better and needs to do better. We need to tend the seed and we need people to do it. Bishop Jung himself has been, with Don Greer at his side, the sower of sowers and the gardener of gardeners. Yes! He's tending and nurturing the circuits and congregation as he's completed two-thirds of his circuit trips. Thank you, Bishop Jung. The world is our parish and garden, so today and this week also we imagine no malaria anywhere. And we elect persons in faith to general and jurisdictional conferences. For tending, we celebrate new Superintendent Sue D'Alessio in the Nicolay and Winnebago District. We do, Sue, welcome. <laughs> And for the equipping and support of leaders, lay and clergy, we celebrate the Director of Congregational Development and Cabinet Member, Enrique Gonzalez. Enrique, yes. <laughs> I want to tell you what Enrique's three top roles are. Leadership development, establishing soon an Institute of Congregational Development and a lay academy, much enhanced. Two the collaboration of the district strategy teams with the conference strategy board, and three, funding, new funding, a foundation for new ministry. We celebrate another planter and grower in camp and retreat and age level ministry, Sharon Cook. Where is Sharon? Is Sharon here? And finally, we celebrate as cabinet the teamwork of our regional office administrators and the bishop's office administrator with us, Sherry Malone, Barb Ridgely, Barb Franken, Susan Olson, whom you met this morning, and Cindy Sharan. I invite all of you to look at these banners behind me again. The seeds we can do. Dropping seeds into the ground is easy. The hard part is our deciding to have the faith to tend the seed. That decision of faith to tend as well as drop is a decision for every one of us, every day, every hour, not just when we come to vote tomorrow on the redistricting. Cabinet believes that God is giving us this vision not just to drop the seed into the ground but to care for it, to support it. Will we see that vision, embrace that faith that God wishes to give us? I invite you today and tomorrow to keep your eyes on these two banners and to ponder the choice. Thanks be to God for the faith we are given. Thank you. The Golden Lean is, uh, as you know, he's retiring it. But <laughs> I need to say to all of you, what a joy, what a great things in my life and my journey and my ministry, being partnered with him. Being a two-year dean of the cabinet and paved it all the way with the, my work as new bishop, 
and he's been hospitable. He's been really journeyed it far than you know that than any possibility. So this is a moment that I need to say thank you to Gordon. I know Deb is right here, and would you stand, Deb? Yes, yes, she's here. So, blessing for your journey, and blessing for your life more. Thank you. So, may we give hands to him. Thank you. It is my privilege to introduce new district superintendent in Nicolay and Winnebago district, and Sue Delisio. She's been journeyed in many different places. I'm going to read it, some portion of what she's been doing. She was served it in Bethel, Arkan, Bethel, and Lagrange, and also Stoughton, Macron and then also interim director of the Ministry and Outreach in 2007 in Wisconsin. And then we landed it to California Pacific Annual Conference in 2009 as a director of the leadership, and came back as a pastor in Oak Creek Community Church. And now from July, we welcome her to Nicolay and Winnebago region. And let us welcome her in the midst of our life together. Gordon talked about the seed planting and the seed tending, and I also think there's something that we all do as well. Gordon, in his years as district superintendent, has planted many seeds and tended many plants and watched them grow. Some he has harvested, some are still growing, and some seeds are still dormant in the soil. And my task will be to carry on and continue to tend what he has planted, what he has helped to grow. I will harvest from his work and his gifts and benefit from the great modeling and ministry that he has done. And so I welcome this opportunity to follow in his gardening steps and uh, be a new seed tender and planter as well among you. I look forward to serving you and serving with you in ministry and mission, imagining Wisconsin anew. Thank you. History is the next agenda. Hi, my name is Sandy Kintner, and I am the chair of the Your Commission on Archives and History. And I am pleased to be able to award those in our midst who have reached significant milestones in their ministry to our conference. Now, by convention, conference for 25, 50, 60, and 70 years receive awards. And after 70 years, an award is given for each additional year. In the interest of time, I would ask that everyone um, in your year group stand and remain standing, and that everyone give a round of applause at the end of that uh, year group. So we're starting with 25. First is Brian Armstrong. Thomas Ball, Michael Carlson, Scott Carlson, Gary Holmes, Laura Kelly, 
Rebecca Kinchi, Mark Peacock, Diane Rue, Linda Shearer, and Paul Weisel. Could we have a big round of applause for 25 years of service? For those people who would like their uh, certificate, we have Lynn Lukeman standing back there. And you can go get that at any time right now, or we will mail it to you at uh, a later date. Moving on to 50 years. It's a long time. William Dushek, John Eldred, Wesley Falk, Robert Gossett, Lance Herrick, David Kellen, Larry Moody, Richard Trust, Proust, Frederick Schultz, Richard Swank, and John Webster. Big round of applause for 50 years. Next, we move on to 60 years. Calvin Carey, Charles Edmund Logstrom Christopher, Thomas Gerald, Gerald, Gerald uh, Crossy, Crossy, Donald Strath, Verilyn Wandery, and Edmund White. S 60 years, a round of applause for them. Moving on, we have a 70 years. We have one person in this group, and they are George Wesley Buchanan. A round of applause for mm -hmm. Reverend Buchanan. We have two people in the 71 years category. They are Robert Sanks. A big round of applause for them. We have uh, uh, someone in 77 years of service. Many of us were not born then. Most of us were not born then. That's Marvin Schilling. Big round of applause for Reverend Schilling, please. And then last we have, um, it was brought to the archives uh, um, attention that we had overlooked someone in the past. So we want to make that up. And this is for, it's for Alinda Nineholm uh, Pliska. Could we please have an applause for her? And that concludes my, oh, wait a minute. I have one more here. We wouldn't, I wonder who this, I wouldn't want to look overlook anyone. Well, this would have been awkward. Uh, one more for the 25 year category. And it's Bishop Hisu Jung. Thank you, honey. <laughs> what a joy to celebrate the years 70, 71. You know, that all the years. I know that whenever I met those, you know, living saints among us, and we offer praise to God and thank you for your ministry as a community together. I think we are collectively one community, isn't it? Praise the Lord. All right, let us move on to the next agenda. We didn't finish it for church and society section and item 15 through 18 is in front of us. Ellen, welcome back. Thank you.
just to give you information briefly, just a page. Mm -hmm. All right, Warren Wadder raised a question in that last session, so uh, we will offer some answer from the chair, and then we will proceed with our item. Go ahead. At the uh, conclusion of the previous time, we were asked about a uh, comment about weapons. Resolution 5011 on page 626 of the 2012 Book of Resolutions. Uh, church is a weapon-free zone. Um, whereas in keeping with the spirit of Isaiah 2.4, God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations. Then they will beat their swords into iron plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. Whereas reflecting the church's traditional role as a place of safety and sanctuary, therefore every United Methodist Church is officially declared a weapon-free zone, first adopted in 2000. All right, thank you. An action item 15 on page 10. Yes. Screen. All right. With all of the changes and uncertainty at times about voter registration and voter rights resources in Wisconsin, we are inviting and encouraging all of our congregations to be a place of resources of which the um, Board of Church and Society, along with Immigration Task Force, the w League of Women Voters, and other organizations will work to provide resources to make available to our local congregations. But we will also need your help in learn and asking uh, local congregations to be aware of, of issues um, pertaining to in that locality. So if there is a change of polling place and so forth. All right, action item uh, 15 number. Um, item 15 is in front of you. Floor is open. Any discussion? All right, ready to board? Okay, those in favor to accept this, would you say aye? Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Okay, motion is carried. It. Action item 16 is found on pages 10 and the top of 11. And Jane Ann, thank you, will come forward. Um, use of genetically modified organisms in crops. And we are asking our local congregations to. Um, be in contact with their respective legislators in regard to government oversight, as well as um, working together to resource local congregations um, uh, for e and educational materials regarding the issue. All right, action item that uh, is in front of you. Is there any debate? Okay. All right, microphone six. She recognized it. My name is Barbara Cook, clergy from Lancaster, and I rise to speak against this resolution. My husband is a career farmer in Wisconsin. We raise genetically modified crops for what we believe to be ethically justified, even ethically mandated reasons. GMOs, are a crucial part of the solution to hunger in our world in which one person in eight is still malnourished. This fact is likely the reason that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the group underwriting much of our Imagine No Malaria program in Wisconsin, also funds extensive research into genetically modified plants. The higher yields, and in some cases enriched nutrients made possible by GMOs, allow farmers to feed ever more people on stagnant or shrinking land bases. GMOs are already highly regulated for their safety and environmental impact, 
It takes approximately 13 years and $136 million for any new genetically modified seed to reach the market in order to allow extensive testing of it by its developers, by the USDA, by the EPA, and by the FDA, all of which must approve the seed under current law before it can be sold or grown. This is far more rigorous testing than is required for any other seed, conventional or organic, including the thousands of conventional and organic seeds that are derived from GMOs. The safety and ecological sustainability of currently growing GM crops has been acknowledged not only by the USDA, the FDA, and the EPA, but also by the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, the World Health Organization, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and many others. While GMOs do carry some potential environmental risks, as does any kind of agriculture, they also carry some real and demonstrable environmental advantages. The United Methodist Church has long been a champion of mitigation of hunger in the world, something of which I am very proud as a United Methodist. For our church to call for more regulation on these already highly regulated, life-saving technologies would be to hurt rather than to help hungry people around the world. And therefore, I urge you to vote against this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Speech against. All right, microphone five. The name and then church. And lay and clergy identify. Jeff Thomas, I'm a lay person from the Fenimore United Methodist Church. I am also speaking in opposition to this, and uh, from a first-hand account, I am a farmer. My fellow farmers and I are caretakers for the soil, God's creation that he provided on day three. We do everything in our power to maintain and improve God's creation from generation to generation because it is our livelihood. Everything that we apply to the land has been tested and studied for years and approved by the FDA, which is the government's governing body. To say that weeds may become resistant to a product is true, but then to say that more of that product is always applied and will lead to pollution is false. If a weed becomes resistant to a, a product, a different product will be used that has a different active ingredient. The amounts used are never to exceed FDA limits. Farmers use genetically modified crops which have been approved by the FDA so we can produce more crops for God's creation. Whether it be fed to raise animals for human consumption or crops used directly for human consumption. We in America have been blessed with and have come to depend on and demand cheap food. The only way for this to happen is for farmers to use the technology that is available and already approved to produce as much as possible. With 600 people in this room, four to five farmers feed all of us. As Methodists, we are an all-welcoming and all-inclusive body. Action 16 does not portray farmers in a very favorable stance, and I believe that is wrong. Mr. Lynn spoke on sowing the seed and tending the seed. In literal terms, All right, two speech against so far. Anybody is for that I recognize? All right, microphone four. My name is Jan Nolan. I'm a lay delegate from Peace United Methodist Church in Richland Center. And I do not have a prepared speech. But I, first of all, I wanted to ask to amend, but I also am of the... Um, I action article. My, can I do that at the same time? Yes, you, no, you can amend and then explain later. Okay. Can you? My amendment was to ask to have long-term studies also done because as both of these farmers have said, and I, my husband and I are, are also farmers, um, there is oversight now. But there are not, and I, I'm sorry, I do not have, 
I wish my husband was here giving this information. But anyway, um, what I wanted to say is that other countries that have done studies, there are other scientists that have done studies. I don't have all of that information in front of me. There have been studies by different university members that have been done, and their research has been um, not allowed to be shown. My, my I would ask, would urge you, because we are saying that um, there is more, there are better yields with genetically modified crops. That is not necessarily true. There are also crops, when you use genetically modified crops, more water is needed to be used on those crops. And I don't want to make an argument, back and forth argument, but I do think that we need to collaborate to get the, the real story of what's going on, because many of these studies are done by the chemical companies. And um, so I would urge you to vote in favor of this resolution, mm. but also to ask for long-term studies to be done and to have. All right. Um, All right. Thank I you. think I will just taking not as amendment, but just taking as a supporting in favor of this motion. So, and then uh, if we probably adopted it, then church and society will future uh, adding more their research or information. So, one speech for. Okay. Any more discussion? All right, way back in the microphone two. Elizabeth Whitford, uh, clergy from uh, Platteville Whig United Methodist Church. Um, I am in favor of this because uh, I recently was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and have found that because of the GMOs and other things that have been added genetically to our food, that I am unable to eat a lot more things than I used to and suffer from so much more because of all these things that we're adding into our food. And so I think it's important for us to, to be able to, to look more at what God's creation has really been, uh, the organic things that he created. And so I am in for this. All right, thank you for two speech, for two speech against. So, all right, microphone six. Good afternoon, Amanda Stein, clergy, Sun Prairie United Methodist Church. Um, I simply wanted to, to, to speak um, for this uh, passage of this uh, action item. I think um, my experience comes from my time in Latin America. I spent two years uh, in Central America, one in um, Guatemala and the other in the southern part of Mexico in the um, state of Chiapas. Um, I just caution us to think about how um, genetically modified products affect other people in the world. When I worked and lived among the indigenous there, um, their largest complaint about their seed, and if you know the Mayan people, you know that um, for them, they believe their faith tradition says that they come um, out of corn and that they are the people of corn. And so when Mon Monsanto, huge, large multinationals, um, come in with new products that have been modified, um, for them, corn if, if there's a need or um, perhaps for their family or maybe there's been a bad season, uh, they then have to um, purchase their corn rather than having storage from the previous year. My point being is that um, some of these genetically modified products do not reproduce. They do not allow, they have been modified to the fact where they do not um, allow cross-pollination or pollination. And so then it just stops and the farmers can no longer um, be able to harvest their own and keep because then that forces them to buy again from Monsanto or um, another large multinational. And so um, it's not so much that I'm, um, I don't believe that there can be some good things for us um, in genetically modified um, different pieces of science there, but I do believe that we need to have more care and be thoughtful about that. And so um, whereas I do speak uh, for this, um, I do 
I do um, also have a question about the members of the local congregations to contact their legislators. I, I am not aware of the current um, government oversight that there is. So I do want to speak for this um, for us to better educate ourselves about um, ramifications of these products. All right, thank you. Three, speech four. Now one speech against I recognize. All right. Microphone four. My name is Steve Paskey, Lady, Emmanuel United Methodist Church, Baraboo, Wisconsin. The silence in this room is deafening. One of the very early lessons we learn as young adults in this culture is to not mix, is to not mix politics with religion. And here we sit as a religious body trying to defy that and trying to mix politics with our faith. Jesus said in Luke 20, 25, Give unto Caesar that, those things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And I see partisan politics as being things that belong to Caesar and not God. There are plenty of opportunities outside of annual conference to exercise our political will and to do it outside of our faith. Church, worship, and our faith should be used for God's purposes, and they should be a refuge for us from a fallen world. It's where we go to get respite. It's where we go for fellowship. It's where we go to get fed and to do God's work. When we bring partisan political issues into the church, they create a wedge that untie. They don't unite us. I don't want the church telling me what foods I can eat and what company I should be buying my drinks from. Our faith is our strongest and com most common bond. Let us focus our work on growing and sharing our faith and bringing others into our faith and the love of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and not doing harm by addressing partisan political issues in his body. Speech against. So three, four, three against. So now I'm going to call upon the, the chair or, yeah. Bishop, I'd like to have Jane Ann give. All right, Jane Ann, you have a speech. In All right, point of order. Okay, microphone number one. Just hold it. Jeff Virtue, retired from Prairie de Sac. Is an amendment in order? Uh, yes. Any well. I'd like to move that we amend action item 16 by deleting the first bullet point under therefore be it resolved on page 11. So before, yes, before the board, yes, to speak. State your amendment, Jeff. Okay, I, I'd like to amend action item 16 by deleting the first bullet point under therefore be it resolved. So I would delete members of local congregations of the Wisconsin Conference contact their respective legislators to require governmental oversight of the use of genetically modified seed and crops and use just the single bullet point under therefore be it resolved. Okay. So that whole the praise after therefore be reserved that that part is just struck out, right? Yes. That's amendment. All yes. right. Is there a second? All right, seconded. All right, any more discussion on this? May I speak to that? Um, yes, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, from the conversation I've heard, I don't know a lot about this issue, but the conversation I've heard suggests to me that there is uh, already a significant amount of oversight related to uh, genetically modified organisms. And it seems to me that it would be helpful, it would be helpful for me and I suspect members of congregations if we had information about those kinds of issues um, so that we can make decisions related to our own individual situations. Uh, so I think that this would help us do that. All right, amendment is in front of you. Bishop, okay. I'm sorry, we would be willing to accept that as a friendly amendment. Oh, as a friendly amendment, okay, good, so then it is a deleted portion is in front of you. And now we had a three debate uh, all done. So last speech that we're going to receive from Jin Yan. 
In the first of our two creation stories in Genesis, God looks at all that God has made and said it is very good. As United Methodists, we believe strongly, as do I believe many Christian denominations, that we have a responsibility to care for God's creation. And in so many ways we do this, and I salute and affirm all that farmers do. I do not want you to think that this is anything against anything that any of you do. But as far as what we have here, we're reminded in our Book of Resolutions that we affirm the knowledge of genetics, that it is a resource over which we have to exercise stewardship responsibly in accordance with God's reign over creation. And I would suggest to us all that we consider that we may not yet know enough to say that we can do this or that they can do this and that perhaps a little more caution would be right on our part. I would urge you to search your soul and go as the Spirit would lead you for all of God's creation. All right, thank you. The motion, uh, can you put it into the uh, screen? Of course, that we uh, understand that whole, the last part, therefore, that behind that parade which struck out, that's the motion in front of you. Okay, are you ready to board? Okay, yes. You see this? All right, those in favor to adopt this motion in front of you, action item 16, raise your hand. Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand. Absentia. Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Our next action item is action item 17, found on page 11. And once again, um, we are working with our partners, such as the Wisconsin Council of Churches, and are asking for our congregations to be willing to participate in this Advocacy Day, which allows us one-on-one -on -one time, or time with our legislators on issues important to us. All right. Action item 17 as a motion in front of you. Okay. The floor is open. All right. No discussion on the. Okay. All right. Microphone five. Mary Ann Cotter, clergy, Trinity Madison. I'd like to speak in favor of this motion. I had the good fortune to participate in the Faith in Action Day several years ago, and the issue at hand was poverty mitigation, and in particular, the ask was focused on the threat of uh, families being taken off Badger care. And that morning began with an educational session, which was um, I thought very well done, and we were given the tools to have face-to-face -face meetings with our legislators at the state capitol, and the Wisconsin Conference, Council of Churches arranged all of that for us, and I just found it a very empowering experience. I'd highly recommend uh, participation in this event, and so urge you to support this resolution. Thank you. Speech for any other discussion? All right, microphone eight. Uh, Ron Vinger, laity, Bethany United Methodist Church in Green Bay. Therefore, be it resolved that each congregation at the Wisconsin Annual Conference send a representative to participate in the biannual Advocacy Day sponsored by the Wisconsin Council of Churches.
a question here. Now this is, we're saying this will be mandatory. Each congregation will send a representative. Do you really think that every congregation is going to be able to muster up a person to send to this? And at what cost? And on what day of the week? I can't speak in favor of this, I'm sorry. This just uh, empties someone's pocket. Thank you. Thank you, speech against. All right, one for, one against so far. Any more discussion? All right, ready to vote? All right, those in favor to adopt this motion? Oh. Okay, yes, yes. Microphone seven, you go. It's all right to make a, you know, that call in that way when I missed it that far. So, all right, microphone seven. Um, Paige Boyer, young adult delegate. I would like to propose an amendment um, oh. and adjust the first sentence to say that each congregation be encouraged to send. Be encouraged to send. All right. Is there a second? Seconded. All right. Speak. Um, these events can be a great opportunity for us to live out our Christian faith in a way that we feel called to. But the previous speaker made an excellent point that it can be very difficult for people to take the time to go. Uh, I do appreciate the second part of the Be It Resolved that says that there will be financial assistance provided. However, if we change the language to be encouraged, we help solve the mandatory problem uh, and at the same time are putting some weight behind the value of this event. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Motion. The amendment is in front of us. Uh, okay. Let's see the screen. All right. Oops. Oh, okay, <laughs> quite there yet. I think uh, included it, be encouraged it to send. I think that's the word that chair heard. Okay, that's the amendment. All right, is there any discussion? All right, are you? Okay, microphone four. We are on debate on amendment. Dave Armstrong, Lady, Cedarburg, UMC. Uh, the topic was brought up in the amendment that funds would be made available through a scholarship. I just want to know where those dollars are going to come from. We're already talking about cutting budgets, and you're adding to it. So I just need to know where that money's coming from. So you are speech against for the amendment. That is correct. Chair, take it. Thank you. Okay. Any more discussion on amendment? All right, are you ready to vote for the amendment? Okay. Those in favor to adopt the amendment, raise your hand. Okay, lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. All right, lower hand. Motion is carried. It. Now, amended it motion is in front of you. Action item 17. Here is a be encouraged to send. That's the part in as a main motion in front of you. Okay. Are you ready to vote? Okay. Those in favor to adopt this amended motion, raise your hand. Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Okay. Motion, lower hand. Motion is carried. It. Motion is adopted it, as it amended it. Thank you. Point of order. Yes, microphone four. State your point of order. My question wasn't answered. I asked where the money was going to come from for these scholarships and... The, your question chair took as a speech against. 
But now it's been passed, and now I'm asking where the money's coming from. Well, I think we operate by the apportionment. Now, um, if you I have an answer? Yes, I do. Okay, please do that. I'm so sorry. I'm taking over that chair's answer. Well, I thought, sorry about that. As a board, we have agreed to provide funding from the Peace with F Justice Fund, with his, which is out of our fundraising efforts, and is not apportionment funds and does not affect the annual conference's budget. So the Peace with the Justice Sunday offering, that will cover that part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's answered it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's move on to the next agenda. The next action item before you is found on pages 11 and 12. It is action item 18 to strengthen background check legislation for gun purchases in Wisconsin. And this is our effort to be on the proactive instead of reactive um, side of legislation um, so that we can work together um, with other organizations and agencies and be able to present the information to you ahead of legislative action in Wisconsin so we can be better informed. All right, screen, let's see. Action item 18 is in front of you. Floor is open. All right, microphone eight, uh, five. Tom Garnhart, retired clergy, the best of all possible appointments. <laughs> when I was 13 years old, I had a 22 rifle, a 20 gauge shotgun, and a nine shot H&R, that's Harrington and Richardson revolver. Kind of unwise of my parents, I think, to let me have the revolver, but I was a farm kid. And farm culture has guns as a part of the culture for very practical reasons of dealing with predator animals, of putting down a sick animal. I live in the city now. And 13 years old olds in the city with nine shot revolvers are a whole other thing than me out there in the country. Uh, taking shots at pigeons. I know there's a lot of feeling gun owners love their guns, and I love mine when I had them. But in the city, where more and more of us live, a gun in your house puts you at more danger than if you have no gun in your house. And so the myth that we're somehow safer with guns is just wrong. And so the more we can control access to guns, not ban them, not keep people from having them, uh, there's sports, sports persons that have very good reasons to have them, but to protect our children and others from the huge dissemination of guns that kind of goes unchecked. One state puts some rules in against gun purchase and the people go across the state line and buy them there so that's how you can get the statistics of gun violence going up in a state that's put in regulations that regulate buying because people rush across the borders to buy more afraid that they won't be able to get them across the border so i do speak uh, very much in favor of the motion thank you microphone four yes Tom Williams, laity, Emmanuel Methodist Church in Baraboo. Uh, I rise in opposition to this, uh, to this action item uh, for a couple of reasons. One is the, the, the definition of a criminal is a person that chooses to disregard the law. Therefore, passing more laws only impacts those who choose to obey the law. So. The fallacy of passing laws 
uh, negating violence is blown away if you look at the statistics in the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois, who has some of the most restrictive gun legislation in the United States. In fact, so strict that it was recently struck down by uh, federal courts. Two, we could have saved a lot of ink if we just would have said that we're encouraging this body and the conference to support the Democrats' position on gun control in the state of Wisconsin. Because every single person listed here is a Democrat and there's not one Republican. So you want to talk about a wedge issue? The committee should just say, let's all be Democrats. Um, well, I, so I encourage people to vote against this action item. All right. Uh, thank you, brother. So one speech for, one speech against it. Yes, microphone eight. Way back, yes. David Carlson, River of Life, Beloit clergy. Um, you're asking us to support legislation without telling us what the legislation actually says. So could you tell us what is the background check? What is it asking for? What will the legislation do? Okay, that's an information question. Yeah, question, answer. yes. Our hope is that this year we had the, the particular legislation that's listed, SB 24 and AB 138, never made it out of committee. And what we're asking for is that we, and we anticipate that there will be similar legislation that comes back into the next session, and that at that time, with that legislation, we are asking for more information and asking members of our congregations to seek more information by contacting their legislatures at that time. That's not answering the question. The question was, what is it that, that legislation is asking for? We're asking for a strengthening of criminal background, uh, background checks for gun purchases. But what does that mean? How much further than what we already got? That's what I'm trying to understand. Um, if we look at relating to sales and transfer of firearms with background checks by providing a penalty for failing to follow the background check. So it's looking uh, process. Um, so we're looking to make sure that what is before us is actually followed. Okay. But I don't know what next year's legislation will look like, but we are looking for support to um, reach out um, collaboratively and bring additional information forward. All right, thank you. Microphone three. I'll name it, and then also speech for or against. I think if you can clear, that will help Secretary Tim. Warren Waddell, Fountain Park, uh, Sheboygan. A question. Didn't we cover this already in, in uh, action item 14? Because it covers background checks in that action item already. And we already passed that action item. So it's a redundant uh, proposal. All right. Why didn't you answer the chair? <laughs> um, <laughs> we felt that this was specific to Wisconsin and what was happening with, in Wisconsin. All right. Um, and All right, that's good enough. Yes, microphone six. The state who you are, and then please uh, state for or against, and then speak. I'm Donald Foster from Caldwell Church, and I'm saying we should strike the whole thing. If the government can't take care of it, we shouldn't. So that means your speech against. I think that's <laughs> microphone two. Um, thank you. Thank you for, yes. Gary Cole, clergy, Emanuel Community, uh, United Methodist Church, Menominee Falls. I don't understand what the um, opposition to criminal background checks can be in our church with our safe sanctuaries policy. All of our Sunday school teachers have to have criminal background checks. Every clergy member of the Wisconsin Annual Conference has to have a criminal background check. Everybody who teaches in public schools has to have a criminal background check. 
Why should this be privileged to not have one? I speak in favor of passing it. All right. Thank you. Two speech for and two speech against. So far, floor is open. Yes. Go to microphone four. Jean Nicholas, Clergy, Wisconsin United Methodist Foundation. I move the question on all that is before us. All right. The question for, uh, call the question. Um, okay. So then. All right. My wise counselor in behind say, now I'm asking to vote that closing uh, the debate. Those in favor, would you raise your hand? Lower hand. Those in not favor, raise your hand. Uh, lower hand. Uh, debate is closed. Okay. Now, ready to vote for this matter. Are you come along? Okay. Seems like a. Some question down there? All right. Now, action item 18 is in front of you as a motion. Okay, Chair, you can speak. Once again, we're just asking to be proactive so that we can make information available as it becomes available in the legislation um, session and asking for us to be involved as a faith community. All right, I ready to vote. Those in favor to adopt this action item 18, would you raise your hand? Lower hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Lower hand. I think a teller, uh, be ready. Teller team two, count this vote. Those in favor for this motion to adopt, would you stand up? All right. Okay, those not in favor for this motion, would you stand up? Oh. oh okay, not counting. All right. Sorry about it. Just a minute. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that correcting. All right, those not in favor. Wait, wait a minute. Just a minute. Hold it. Yeah, we are tired, so that's why. Just to hold a minute. Those in favor, uh, those is not those not in favor. Would you stand up? Tell her team. Tell her team one, two. Yeah, same team. Yes.
Beautiful people. Let's not talk. This is plenary. Okay. Give space to each other. We're still collecting. And thank you for cooperation. And Chair, I need to apologize, I think, uh, to the man that, I, my brother, I didn't know your name, but when I answered it, your question, just to, without asking Chair about that, and that was a little bit rude as a Chair to do you, so I apologize to you. So, hopefully you understand that. Yes, result? Abstention. Oh, ab abstention. Do you have a... Yes. All right. I think you, you like to speak, so why don't you talk to neighbor now, <laughs> loudly. Yes, say hello to each other and say I love you and, and how you doing and what's up to. All right, the result of the ballot, both. We here. Thank you. In favor, yes, it's 313. No, 225. Abstention, 33. Motion is carried. Thank you. Ellen. Thank you, Bishop. I would like to thank um, those of you who contacted me directly, who are face-to-face -face conversations, our emails and phone calls regarding the action items that were brought forth with you. Uh, to you, I hope we can continue the dialogue as we build beloved community together and work through the th ish justice issues that are before us. At this time, I would also invite members of the Board of Church and Society to stand and be recognized. And if we could please give a round of applause as a thank you for their All on right, their work. leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Let's receive the sixth ballot vote report from Amber. We have all our delegates voted for for general conference. Laity, you cast... 352 ballots, and listen, you got 350 valid ballots. Yay! Amen. <laughs> Great job. We got it. The third delegate, lay delegate for our general conference delegation is Gail Burgess. 
with 173 votes. And if we could scroll the rest of them. Katie Estrom Fuller, 94. Tom Pop, 30. Judy Vaspi, 19. And John Lawson, 13. All right, Gail, where are you? Gail? 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 There she is, way over there. All right, congratulations. <laughs> All right. Clergy results. Number of ballots cast was 209. Number of valid ballots, 205. Our delegation is complete with Steve Zikoff receiving 83 votes. All right. Steve Zikoff, where are you? He's right behind you. <laughs> Congratulations. Would you stand up? All right, now we're going to move. Just a moment. The remainder of the votes went okay. um, Amanda Stein, 79, and Jorge Mayorga Solis, 30. All right. Okay. Now let's, okay. Start. Microphone okay. 8. Uh, question.
This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. All right, are you... Do you need more time? Okay. Yes, don't be hurry. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. All right, let me ask you to stand for the laity, those who are done, would you stand, laity? Just a reminder, if you did put a write-in vote, demonstration of you need producer. to tell the tellers you did so when they take your ballot. Okay. The teller team. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. There are still few people who have not collected it. This is a demonstration In the middle, of Ustream middle section. Producer. Tellers, could someone pick up the ballots in the middle by microphone five, please? Thank you. All right, lady ballot is closed. Okay, would you be patient a little bit? I'm going to give you a break time. Even short break, by short break time, I'm going to give you. So if you... Do good. This is a demonstration. The clergy, of would you stand? The teller team, go uh, pick it up.
This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. All right, close the ballot. It's uh, closed. It. I'm going to suggest um, we're going to come back 5:10. It means this 13 minutes in my time is a recess. Stretch 6:10, 6:10. Yes. All right. Stretch break and come back. 6:10. This is a demonstration of Ustream you Producer. That you, we can do it by consent. All you right. know, it, You're right. right. Mm. If she says, I would agree with accepting that, then you can say, is there any objection to that? You're right. If I they mean, say there's no objection, then, then, go. then... You're right. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes. I know that's the moment that is uh, always yeah, fussy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially so. when the maker of the original one says yes. Yes. So steer the body property yeah. here, so I need to ask them. Right. You're right. This is a demonstration Good. of Ustream yeah. Producer. Right. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer.
This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer. This is a demonstration of Ustream Producer.